Theoretical and practical efficiency of solar cells. We get the solar spectrum. This is our essential resource and the solar cell converts a part of this photon energy into electrical energy. The power is given by the product of the current and voltage. The maximum power is the product of photocurrent field factor and uh, photovoltage. And the power conversion efficiency is the maximum power over the incoming uh, power of the photons. And we want to see what is the, the fundamental limitation to the power energy conversion in terms of uh, physical uh, principles. Um, we would use a method derived in 1960 by Shogdian Kisser, which gives the maximum efficiency based on uh, some assumptions that can later be generalized for more details about a specific technology. So we start with a model uh, that has uh, no limitation for transport, flat uh, bands and Fermi level, good extraction, and uh, the sharp band gap that uh, absorbs nothing below the energy of the gap and above it absorbs all the photons. And we use this model to evaluate the efficiency of a given solar cell based on this uh, fundamental semiconductor structure. So there will be energy in terms of photons coming to the solar cell. Then the solar cell generates a JV curve. Uh, it has a photocurrent, a photovoltage, a field factor, and uh, the energy is basically a current, uh, electrical current times the voltage. So uh, the voltage is large, a large bang up, and the current is large and low bang up. So we will have this basic uh, structure of the possible efficiencies as a function only of the bang up. So there is a, uh, this method, which is based on the tight balance uh, principle to obtain, given a bang up, the uh, maximum power uh, that the, the solar cell can provide. So we consider the fundamental model, as we said, it's surrounded by black body radiation and uh, it's coming also the, uh, the solar spectrum. And then uh, the absorber material is a semiconductor with the sharp band gap. Uh, and the only parameter that defines this absorber is the band gap because it uh, will absorb all the photons when they impact the solar cell. The next assumption is that the recombination losses are minimal, so that we work in the relative limit in which uh, all the recombination is radiative emission. Then we can find uh, the photocurrent in the relative limit and we can have the photovoltage in the relative limit. We have calculated all these things. Based on the voltage, you can calculate the field factor and then you directly obtain the power conversion efficiency. This is the Shirley Kitzer method. The main factor that decrease efficiency are the transparent region. You lose a lot of photons that are not absorbed. And the thermalization, photons with a large energy become thermalized to the bang up. So all the excess energy of the photon is lost unless you use uh, schemes of multiple exciton generation that can generate more than one photon, more than one electron hole per, per photon. But this is not the case normally, so that all the photons give the energy of the bang up. And working out these uh, conditions based on these physical principles of the tail balance, we obtain a the two main losses is the transparent and the thermalization. And there are additional factors and the, the, the yellow is associated to the field factor. Uh, that means the operation point. 
and the green is the power that can be extracted. So based on the show leakage uh, method, we can then obtain optimal current, uh, optimal voltage and optimal efficiency using either the black body radiation uh, to simulate the sun or the AM 1.5 spectrum, which is the solar spectrum. And we obtain these graphs about the ideal photocurrent the ideal photovoltage and finally the total efficiency that is possible. This is the result of the maximal photocurrent that we can obtain according to the band gap and the uh, different technologies at the moment of making the stable, how they reach, uh, they approach in the record cells, the maximum uh, photocurrent. This is the same for the maximum photovoltage. There is the bang up value at the operation point. We have uh, less voltage and the different technologies approach more or less the ideal voltage at the bang up. And this is finally the total conversion efficiency of different technologies. So some of them are above the 75% and others are less depending on the uh, properties of the semiconductor, contacts, uh, light management, how the solar cell can be made more or less perfect. Now, evolutions of efficiencies, we have the analysis of laboratory cells, which may be rather small, around one centimeter square. And this is the evolution of the perovskite solar cell since 2010 to uh, 2020, reaching 25% in different configurations. The general report of efficiency is described in the NREL efficiency table that uh, you can see all the historic evolution of the different kinds of solar cells. In photovoltaic technologies, we have the dominant silicon solar cells and some thin film like CIGS, coming to the right, amorphous silicon that are also uh, produced uh, industrially. The dominant is the silicon made from uh, ingots. And here we have the efficiency of solar cell panels, which is uh, smaller than the smaller uh, laboratory cells, which is from 16 to 25% in the case of silicon. Here we can see the maximum efficiency is around 20%. And this is the historical evolution of thin film and crystalline silicon of the prices with respect to the cumulative production. This is the learning curve of the decrease of the price when the production of the photovoltaic technologies is increased. <laughs>